Hey guys, Dr. Reeves here, back with another exciting adventure in learning about epilepsy and spending a few minutes on YouTube. Today's talk is about how does a seizure doctor, or also known as an epileptologist, uh, or just a general neurologist, go about choosing a seizure medication? Do you choose this drug, or does that one look better? I don't know, I like the color. Actually, there's two real ways that we go about choosing a medication. One, you go into the back room and we spin a really big wheel which is attached to the wall and it has the names of all the seizure medications on the outside and it spins around and whichever one stops at the top, that's the one we use. That actually works fairly well. It's short, but it's really not the best. Now, before I can really answer the, the real way about how we choose uh, a seizure medication, I want to remind you uh, of the classification of epilepsies. Now there's a whole video about like different seizure types and so if you haven't done that homework you can go do it um, and then you can come back and then we can continue. Okay we'll come back. So we're gonna cut to our awesome graphics department now. So broadly speaking there are two flavors of seizure, two flavors of epilepsy partial onset where the seizures start in some part of the brain and they may spread to some variable degree. This used to be called focal epilepsy years ago. The, the uh, most common term that you see in scientific publications now is localization related epilepsy which doesn't really say anything more than this but it's a new term. So these are seizures that start in some localized part of the brain as opposed to seizures that start in the generalized whole brain uh, erupting electrically in the generalized uh, whole brain. So generalized well, at onset. And of course there's a, 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 always a little section of patients where you, you've looked at all the data and at the end of it you just basically say, I don't know, or we have a few patients that have both. Why is this important? This is important because some seizure medications work for partial onset seizures only. Some seizure medications work for both partial onset and generalized onset and there are a few that really only seem to work for generalized onset seizures. So that's why this, this uh, is so important of what kind of epilepsy does the patient have. Now all the seizure drugs that are developed now in the last 20 years, 30 years, are all designed, they're all tested, found to be effective for partial onset seizures because that's the lion's share of seizures. If you uh, develop epilepsy uh, after the age of oh, 18 or 20, odds are really very high that it's partial onset. And of course, those people who are uh, of that age group, they're adults, and they can be in drug trials. So there's a lot of them, that's where the market is. So all the new drugs that have come out are all tested for partial onset seizures. Some of them work in generalized onset seizures. So now let's talk just about partial onset seizures. Um, when we're looking at the medication to select for that, everybody says, uh, I want the strongest medicine, the one that is the best at preventing seizures. And there isn't such an animal. The, the fact of the matter is that the old drugs like Dilantin came out in the 30s. Um, Tegretol, 1972, I believe it was. Depakote, 1978. They're all more or less similar in their ability to prevent seizures. But the question is, how are the side effects? What's the cost? How often do you have to take it? Um, does it have any other kind of good benefits that, that might kind of get two birds with one stone, if you will. And then there's this big uh, kind of unknown. The black box factor is that every person is a different. They have different wiring, they have different chemistry, and they will have different reactions to the medication. And so we really can't know uh, how somebody's going to react until we give them the medicine. I often tell my patients, you know, I can tell you how this drug affects a hundred people or a thousand people, but that isn't what you really want to know. You want to know how does it affect one person, and that's you. And statistics doesn't tell us that. We can talk about the common things, of course, um, but because most people have 
what most people have. But there's always the oddball reaction. Um, sometimes you have somebody that just, you give them a tiny little dose and, and they just, they can't get out of bed. So we are choosing though based on side effects as much as effectiveness. Now there have been some head-to-head -head studies done of how much do the different seizure medications um, affect thinking and memory and behavior and that kind of stuff. And those were really helpful when they started coming out in the 80s and 90s because we really had head-to-head -head data. The older drugs in general, Dilantin and, and Carbamazepine, tend to be uh, not as well tolerated as many of the newer ones for many people. There's always the exceptions. Phenobarbital came on the market about a hundred years ago, maybe a couple years more. Uh, not used very much anymore because it really is pretty sedating and has uh, some, some negative uh, side effects over the years. But the newer drugs uh, tend to be a little bit less sedating. They tend to have a little less um, other side effects that would uh, bother us. So that's what we keep in mind when we select the medication. The other thing that we have to think about is sometimes how do these two medications play together. So a common uh, one we think about is there's a drug called Depakote. There's another one called Lamictal. They're both good seizure medications. They both are broad spectrum. They do partial onset seizures and they do generalized onset seizures. But there's a little interaction between the two where one will tend to raise the level of the other. And so you have to be careful. You have to know what you're doing. If you're going to mix the two, you can do it, but it gets a little bit uh, more tedious. So we kind of keep things like this in, in mind. Now the other thing that physicians use and epilepsy specialists use in selecting a medication, quite frankly, is what are they familiar with? You know, if there are, there are, if there were, if there were 80 seizure drugs, there aren't, but if there were 80, nobody can use all 80 so frequently that they really feel comfortable knowing the ins and outs and, and what to expect and, and, and such. And so realistically, if there were 80, uh, the epilepsy specialist would probably focus in on 10 or 15 that they really use regularly. Well, there aren't 80, but there are about 20. And uh, I use virtually all of them uh, because I have lots of patients who have tried and failed many other medications. But uh, the reality is we all kind of have this little toolbox of our first-line medications that we tend to go to because they tend to be very well tolerated, they tend to be effective, uh, they tend to be um, affordable, uh, and they are fairly predictable, and, and well, that's where we tend to start. Now, can the epilepsy specialist point to the data that proves that their top one or two or three medications are better than somebody else's top one or two or three medications? No. They're choosing based on familiarity, side effects, um, how often you have to dose it, sometimes what allergies they have. But there are other things that we keep in mind as well. So for example, uh, there are a couple of medications, one in particular, uh, uh, Depakote, uh, that tends to promote weight gain. So when I have a patient with a epilepsy where weight is a problem, mm, I might think twice about that. Another consideration we bring in, into mind uh, is women who are of childbearing age. Well, some medications have a higher rate of birth defects in case the patient would get pregnant. So, kind of throw that into the hopper and, and think about it. Um, some medications, um, for example, uh, lenictal, in some people tends to be a little bit of a mild antidepressant. Sometimes you get two birds with one stone. That wouldn't be bad. Lamictal and Depakote both are used fairly commonly by our uh, psychiatrists to sort of help regulate mood. And so in a person where that's an issue, kind of ups and downs of mood, well, you might get two birds with that stone. So these are some of the factors, not all of the factors, that go into thinking about things. But this is a major uh, s uh, slice of what goes through the mind of an epilepsy expert as they're thinking about the next drug to try. Thanks for paying attention. I hope it was worth your time.